Barbarians, bards, clerics, druids, fighters, monks, paladins, rangers, rogues, sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. The classes that 5th edition D&D's foundation is built. Each with their own style and charm. But what does it take to homebrew a good subclass? And what are the basics of each class that make them unique? Hi, I'm Tony from the Homebrew Crew, and this is Homebrew Help. Hey there, and welcome to Homebrew Help, our new series of videos detailing the whys and how-tos when it comes to 5th edition D&D homebrewing. Over the past year since we started the channel, we've seen literally hundreds of homebrew races, classes, and monsters, and have been asked from time to time, what makes a good homebrew? How can you improve my homebrew? What do you guys think of this homebrew? We've even somehow gotten ourselves into Dragon Plus magazine, and I still have no idea how the heck that happened. So we thought really hard about it, and when it came down to it, it was just too big for one video. Thus, the Homebrew Help series was born. <laughs> Our goal with this series is to help bring better understanding of the mechanics of 5th edition to help you make better homebrews for your campaigns. We're going to start this week with the most basic of basics, classes. And yes, I'm sure that if you're watching this video, you probably already know the classes of D&D. But before we start building a subclass or a completely new class from scratch, we have to break down what we have in front of us and learn what makes each class unique. You see, every single class in D&D 5th Edition has a role to play when it comes to the party, and each comes with a mechanic that allows them to excel at that role, and also do things that other classes can't. <laughs> So when making a subclass for an already current class, to ignore that mechanic makes them into something that they're not. Subclasses should build upon the already established mechanics of a class, giving them new options to do what comes naturally to them. Sorcerers, for example, with their meta magic and sorcery points. If you look at every official D&D sorcerer subclass, you'll notice something interesting. Each utilizes those two class features. Every subclass has some extra use for sorcery points, aside from the Storm Sorcerer, but we'll get to him in a second. All of them utilize meta magic, or the idea of controlling magic based on the fact that it's inherent to the Sorcerer. Storm Sorcerer even adds a little extra damage and, uh, you know, chooses who it can hit with that, mimicking the meta magic of Careful Spell. Barbarians get to rage, Bards use Bardic Inspiration dice, Clerics get to call down the wrath of their god with Channel Divinity. Every class has a specific mechanic. Where people first go wrong when they make a homebrew class is they don't plot out that mechanic. What makes your homebrew class unique? What can they do that no one else can? And how does that compare equally to everybody else that's playing with you? When it comes to making a subclass for an official race, how can you make that class's mechanic work in a different way? The difference between homebrew classes that do well and those that don't is a very simple question. Can it do something great and not everything great? It's the simple Aquaman vs Superman moment. Things that a class can't do are just as important as the things that they can do and what their abilities are. If you make a class that can do everything, you take away from the basics as to why even classes are created. This is more the model like games like uh, Champions Complete, where you spend points on what your hero can do from a gamut of options. This is not 5e. 5e is simple. But here's how this works. It's all about balance. Wizards in 5th edition, for example, have very little health and AC and are terrible at hand-to-hand -hand combat but they have very high spell damage, are limitless in their knowledge of spells, and are the only class that can specialize their magic to do even more. They use the mechanic of specialization to rise above their shortcomings, and because of this are considered balanced. They can survive just as well as a barbarian if they play to their strengths. Sorcerers, on the other hand, can manipulate how spells fire off, barbarians get bonuses to attacks and damage, even rangers with their favorite enemies change the game in some way. But each of them have a weakness. 
low number of spell options for the sorcerer, advantage on attacks against you when raging for the barbarian, and let's not forget disadvantage on range attacks where you're next to a hostile creature and the dreaded not my favorite enemy or terrain issue. So you need a game changer. The first tip is to look at the rules of 5th edition and see how it's played. See what mechanics are missing from player classes. If, for example, your idea is a blood mage, maybe incorporate hit dice or exhaustion as a mechanic to gain power. If you're trying to make a pet class like a summoner or a dragon knight, look at the rules for a familiar and give them things that a wizard's familiar can't normally do, like giving it a full list of actions from attack straight on through search. Now, with subclasses, all you have to do is find a way to play with the mechanic that the class already has. Maybe your Blood Mage is a Warlock subclass, granting him additional abilities from his patron uh, for the number of slain creatures he may have offered him. Or maybe it's a Selfless Cleric subclass, who puts himself in harm's way, submitting his own hit dice to heal others. Or maybe it's a Wizard, you know, who focuses on disease or damage over time, and that's tied to his own personal well-being and health. Regardless, all you have to do is find the theme of your subclass and see which mechanic works in each class, and see which one works best for you. So to recap, you got to know your game. The rules and the abilities are already established in those books and classes. Then use that framework, take your theme that you want to create, and test it with different class mechanics for a subclass, or create something brand new utilizing a rule in the book that's never been played in a player class. I hope this has been helpful in some way, shape, or form, and I'd love to hear the stories and ideas that you guys have come up with as far as classes. If you're having trouble figuring out what works best, drop me a line over in our Discord. If I can't help, there'll definitely be somebody in here who's willing to help and can. So I think this series is going to be kind of cool and kind of big. I hope you guys enjoy it. Next week, we're either going to be covering one main class separately and picking it apart and finding a few homebrew examples of it. Or we're going to take a look at balancing a submitted homebrew class that people have sent in to us. I haven't quite decided yet, but somewhere in between, I'll be hashing out my new shaman class for 5e and getting it ready for playtesting. So remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are homebrewed and homebrewed correctly. So until next time, keep brewing.